I'm curious what it's like to go back and look at some of the videos that I have made. I've done a video like this before where I looked at the evolution of Jacksepticeye. Somebody made a video of me and went through a bunch of like my first videos, my earlier videos, my later videos and up to date videos at that time. And then Watch Mojo went along and made a video of the top 10 Jacksepticeye videos. And I did a video on both of those. And then in the Watch Mojo one, I I talked about maybe reacting to my most popular videos because some of people's top videos, some of the ones that I'd consider my top videos are not always the ones that got the most amount of views. So by and large, it'll be interesting. I haven't checked my most popular videos in a very, very long time. So I'd be curious to see what it's like to, to go back and look at those videos again, to see why these videos are my top videos, to see why these things are being watched by so many different people and what is actually in there. So here's my channel, lovely as it is. Um, I, I'm in incognito mode as well, just to, just so I can see the channel the way it's supposed to be from like an outsider's perspective and not from the inside the way I normally would. Um, so here's all the videos that I've just uploaded. This will date the video very well. Um, so let's go to most popular. I know what some of them are. I know that all the way is like, yeah, the most popular and then oh lord it's a lot of animations <laughs> so we have the the most popular video i've uploaded is the all the way song which i knew i knew that that was the most popular one and i knew that this would be the second most popular one the james farr five nights at freddy's 2 animation because those were the five nights at freddy's 2 animation was my most popular video by a freaking long shot at the time and then all the way came out and fucking ballooned in success Three of my top five videos are Five Nights at Freddy's animations. Which makes sense, because anybody who has Five Nights at Freddy's animations on their channel, that's usually some of the highest videos that they actually have. But all the way... Top of the world is your ladies! My name is Jacksepticeye! My name is Jacksepticeye! Uh, my name is Jacksepticeye! Yeah, Jacksepticeye! Jack 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 all the way... To fucking victory to town! <laughs> oh my god, this is... This video, I absolutely love. I love this song. This is so cool. And it has transcended way beyond what this channel is or who I am or what I do here, which blew my mind because there's so many people around the internet now who anytime they see all the way, a good example of this is every time there's a picture that shows up on Reddit every now and then of a, of a wall that has graffiti on it. The graffiti is kind of going in a wave that says all the way. And it's made to look like it's kind of 3D and it's kind of like messing with your eyes a small bit. But every time that picture shows up, all the top comments on Reddit are always like, to fucking Victory Town, or Jacksepticeye Intensifies, or something like that, or Great Great Steve. And that, that blows my mind because I didn't think that this would go... I knew this song would go down well because it's Happy Wheels and it's a song and I hadn't uploaded anything like that before. But to see it transcend way beyond that blew my mind. And it to, to have it be the most watched video on my channel with 1.2 million likes, 74 and a half million views, almost 75. That is just bananas. Another reason I wanted to do a video like this was to kind of give some some insight into how some of these videos went because a lot of these are pretty old now, like 2016, July 2016. That's pretty old by by the internet standards at this point. So. When they, I met these guys, the Shmo Yoho guys, the Gregory brothers, at the um, the event, the Creator Summit in New York that I went to in May, actually. Yeah, so I, I talked to them in May of 2016, and they had just done a song for Mark, and they were like, we want to do one for you as well, would you like that? And I was like, are you serious? Of course I would, I would love it. I love the songs that you guys make. And then... July by then they came back to me with it so they they had sent me like little clips here and there like the first minute of it like they do with most of the songs and I fell in love with it immediately I couldn't believe that they were able to take something like my Happy Wheel series and turn it into this kind of stuff every now and then I believe in you I believe I believe I believe in you I believe it's crazy. I believe in Steve. And then it became so quotable. And there's like a good message behind it because it's all about trying your hardest and going all the way. And I don't know, it was really fun. And everyone keeps telling me to be like, Jack, you should sing this in a video sometime. I'm like, but this is auto-tuned. I'm just screaming at the top of my lungs for the Happy Wheels episodes. I believe in Steve. <laughs> it's Steve! Oh yeah! It's Steve! My voice doesn't even sound like that anymore. And of course, Five Nights at Freddy stuff is going to be really popular. Top of the morning to you ladies, my name is Jack Suitcoy and welcome back to Five Nights at Freddy's 2. It's not even that it's scary anymore or anything, it's Wait just- Wait for it! Ah, there it is. Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! 
Even my audio is different back then. My audio is not as good as it is now because I didn't know what I was doing. This is back in 2015, so this is a year, uh, over a year before that other video. Lord, that's, oh, it's almost four years old at this point. That's crazy to think about. Um, but James, who did this animation, he, he was the one who did this one too. Top of the morning to you ladies, my name is Jack Septiguy and welcome to Five Night at Freddy's- <laughs> And I love it, I love his style, he makes such really great animations and you can see in the top videos he's- He's there, 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 and he's down here, and he's probably somewhere else. Am I going blind? No, he's not. Okay. <laughs> but his animation style is so good, and I've, I've been in talks with him to do a new animation soon, uh, which I'm very, very excited about, but I love his style. It was so good. It became, like, one of the first animations that I did. Another one was the Christmas Shopper Simulator that, um, Tristan did. Um, Ghastly Ghost? Does she still go by that name? Um, such a good animation as well. And I, I was so fond of these styles, and I was so happy that this did well. I mean, it's Five Nights at Freddy's, so it's gonna do well anyway, but it also has Chica's ass in the thumbnail, which also is gonna do well. Ah, uh, Freddy's gone now as well. There he is! This was even Good made- to see you, buddy! <laughs> Getting on top of things. Getting nice. This was even made back Getting when I was fresh, wearing the hat. Fresh, delicious. Fuck. Who's down there? This Fuck is so well done, you. it's so professional. Oh! There shit! It is. Nice cupcake! Nice dude, Chica's got a nice pair of cupcakes on her. <laughs> oh man, those animations are fantastic. These two are a fucking anom anomaly. Um, 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 anomaly. The visitor, why is this? Like my fifth most watched video. Top of the morning to you ladies, my name is Jack Sip Guy. Welcome Jesus to Christ. The Visitor, a flash game that people really, really want Calm me down. to play. Probably because a lot of people have played it already. Um, Take a breath, Jesus Christ. Even, <laughs> it's so weird to go back and watch these videos because this is 2015 as well. This is March of 2015. Apparently 2015 was my year. Um, which it kind of was. 2015 and 2016 were the year when this channel was going way into the clouds. It was, it was, I think it was the fastest growing channel of 2016. Um, or definitely one of the fastest growing channels of 2016. Which was completely bizarre to me. And I didn't know really what was going on. I still didn't really know what I was doing. I was just having fun and playing games and... Listening to this style of commentary now, it's still me, of course, it's still, like, who I am, it's energetic, it's, it's loud, but back then, I, uh, God, I had so much more energy. I like these Flash games, I did the Wackier games, I did the Henry Stickman series that people Lord. like, I did some of the surgery games. Why? That Why is like. this? So, people have been asking me to play this, since I started playing some more of those, again. Okay, oh here I am. Look at this little baby. Um, apparently I play as an alien, and I have to go kill things, and get stronger? I don't know, let's suggest- God, I'm so- <laughs> I just never stop talking, do I? It's just non-stop. I was so worried. It's weird to go back and watch it now because, like, that- that time and that version of me, it, it's not like it was fake or anything, it was just of its time. At that time, that's who I was. I was so bubbly, energetic, I was so into the games, I was so like, Yeah, let's go, let's do this! Like, top of the morning, do you like this go? Let's- Oh, we're playing the visitor now and- it was so bizarre. Nowadays, I'm much more relaxed. I'm still loud and still energetic, and it's still too much for some people. But watching this now just feels like a different person. It feels like this is this was me when I was back. Like, please like me, please everybody all the time like me. And I was I was so afraid of not filling the silence. Like I was afraid to let anything like sit and just lie because I was afraid that. People would get bored or something like that. I don't know. So I just kept talking all the time. General idea that I got. Is that me? That's a worm. Okay, click the frog. Kill the frog. No? Kill the tree. <laughs> Take that, frog tree. Kill the Aww. bird. Can I kill the bird? Oh my god. My mouse is freaking out. Why? Stop that, you silly. Um. Oh my god, it's such a- that's fun to go back and look at that. Cause I can re I can remember recording all of these videos, obviously. I can remember where I was, what I was doing, where I lived. Um, so to see, like, I- I know I say that I'm a different person now, but that doesn't mean I regret any of this. This was still super fun to do. And at the time it felt just like, oh, it was such a fucking glorious time on the channel. Cause everything was new, everything was fresh, everything was just like, yeah, let's go, let's do it! And I, like, every morning I woke up, I still love doing my, my videos, and I still love this channel, and I still love what I'm doing, and I wake up very excited about doing it, but there's some days when I wake up and I'm like, ah, I don't really want to do anything today. Whereas back then, every day was just like, let's fucking go. What do we record today? Let's fucking do it. Let's, oh, energy. Man. 
What happened to me? Am I dead inside now? Did I lose- did I lose the spark? Did I lose my passion? No. It was just a lot more to play back then as well. Because all these things were just- Like, there was just an endless supply of games to play because I hadn't played them yet. And now I've played everything under the sun. It's like, ah, oh, what do we do now? But why- why this? Why is the visitor game so popular? Fish and rod. I'm gonna come in through the vent and wreck your shit! I hope you're having a nice night. I hope you're sleeping very well. I'm gonna eat your fish! Splat! Oh! I have a fin on my net, my head. My neck and my head together. My Ned. I have a fin <laughs> on my Ned. Kill the bird! Oh man, and this- it's such a different time on YouTube as well, because that was a time when you could just upload anything. You'd upload anything and people would watch it. People were just there. The algorithms were all different, there was no copyright claims, there was no demonetization, there was no copyright strikes as much. Like everything was just- it was the wild west on YouTube back then. You could upload anything, the algorithm just pushed gaming content so unbelievably hard. It still does, but it's- it's more curated now, it's because there's so many people doing it, it's all just kind of Fortnite and Minecraft and things like that that get just pushed in the trending tab all the time for gaming now. But back then it was just- you could go into the- it wasn't even a trending tab back then, you could go into just YouTube and there was just endless supplies of gaming content and it was all completely different and completely all over the place and it was- it was glorious, everybody was just uploading whatever they wanted and you didn't have to worry about anything. I mean, it makes sense that all these things are like three years ago, four years ago, two years ago, five years ago. Oh god, yeah, the first Happy Wheels video. We'll click into that in a minute because I have some stuff to talk about in that, but back then on YouTube as well, I don't know, it was just such a different time because it was so much more homegrown. Nowadays, stuff is way more professional. I mean, even me, like the camera I'm using now is way more professional than back then. The microphone I'm using, the monitors, the, the computer I have is way stronger. All these things progress. There's people who edit videos now. I have Robin editing my videos and there's more people working for YouTubers and everything. Back then it was just me, my camera, my game and my room. And I was doing everything on my own and I was working 9 to 12 hours a day doing YouTube all day, every day, never taking breaks, uploading the exact same time every day, 5 and 8 p.m. every day. And it was just such a different time. Everything was just completely different. Um, not to say that it's, well it is, slightly worse now because a lot of things have changed for the worse like I know YouTube had to bring in the copyright system and the claiming and the demonetization and all that kind of stuff and adpocalypse and all these different things have happened since then and back then it was just a lot more fun because you could just sit down and record literally anything and as long as you were having fun with it people at home were having fun with it as well but nowadays it's much harder to keep people's attention there there's click-through rates on YouTube where your thumbnail and your title and all this kind of stuff mean much more now than they ever have. So it's 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 interesting to go back and watch that back then. Let, let's click into Happy Wheels. Let's see what this was like. Oh, this is gonna be so different. Top of the morning to you laddies. My name is Jack Septiguy. Welcome to Happy Wheels! Yeah, I finally got around to playing it. I have never once played Happy Wheels before in my life. Oh my god, that's such a different style of commentary. I still wasn't comfortable with myself. I still didn't really know what I was doing. I still didn't know what I wanted to do on YouTube. Um, and I've, I've said a lot of this stuff in the Watch Mojo video and I'm probably going to repeat myself a lot here, but this November 2013. Good lord, I, I started off making my very first video in um, December 2012. I, I basically started in 2013, because December 2012 was like right in the middle of December, so it's basically 2013. But that was my solid snake impression video. But it wasn't until like 2013 that I started making gaming videos a lot more. And Happy Wheels was one of those games that everybody was playing, it was already known at the time like Uber Hacks or Nova, Toby Turner, Felix, everybody was playing Happy Wheels and it was already known as the game you play to get views kind of thing. Mark was playing a lot of Happy Wheels, so... I was reluctant to play it because I didn't want to come across as like me just playing it because I wanted to get views. Um, and I wanted people to know that I wasn't doing YouTube for that kind of reason. So Happy Wheels was a weird one, but I really wanted to play Happy Wheels because it seemed like it would suit my style. Because I was very bombastic, I was very energetic, I was very over the top and everything, so Happy Wheels would have been perfect for me. So I put it up on Facebook. Sh and I think I put it up on Twitter as well, asking should I play Happy Wheels? And the vast majority of people said no. The vast majority of people came back and said no because everyone's playing it. It's like, oh, it's just clickbait. These different types of things. And I almost didn't record and I was like, you know what, I'll record one episode and see if people like it. If they don't, then I'll just stop playing it. And look what it turned into, a hundred episodes later, 16 and a half million views on the first episode. 
Mother of Christ. Ever. Seriously, I've never played it. I've never even tried to play it. But I have seen a lot of videos of it, and I know what kind of game it is, and I know what it's all about. I, I sound like I'm drunk. I sound like I've never played it. Seriously, I've never played it. I've never even tried to play it. It sounds like somebody has, like, half speed, half sped my video. Like, I've never played it. I've never even touched it, kind of thing. Um, because again, I, I didn't talk in my regular voice really yet. I was still pronouncing words slightly Americanized, because that was how talking clearly to me was just talking slower and also talking in a more different accent, a more, a more clear voice ended up pronouncing things slightly this American is a game for that some I've, reason. I've wanted to play for a while. I've wanted to put it up on the channel for a while, but the I don't know why channel I'm for it a while. Off, but here I am now. Let's go play, okay? I'm gonna go to the user-created levels because those are apparently the best. Yeah, I didn't even have facial hair back then. I had like a tiny little chin thing going on. I was wearing my hat and everything, and now look at me! I'm a fucking hairy monstrosity. <laughs> look at that glow up! <laughs> so a fun fact about this video as well, I have it in the description here saying in-game audio didn't record, so I tried to add some effects. I'm sorry if it sounds bad. So when I recorded this episode, none of the game audio recorded. I think I was using... Was I using Bandicam back then? I can't remember what software I was using to actually record the game. And it just didn't record audio for some reason. It didn't pick up the audio from the game. So I had to add in all the sound effects again myself. I went back and I recorded... I looked at the episode. I saw what type of sounds I needed and I went back and recorded some more Happy Wheels. And just took bits of audio and put it back into the uh, game. BMX stunt! Right and I've never actually bat. watched That's it again to see if it eye. matches. I have absolutely no idea how to play this game. See, there's no oh sound God. in that thing. Uh, I can There's do no it. sound going on it. at all. There's no sound in this. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, this, keep going. There's no sound this happening. This seems rather easy. So, should something not be trying to kill me? Oh, God. There's oh, no sound God. in those. <laughs> this is trying to kill me. Oh, no. Jesus Christ. Oh, no, little Billy. Oh, Billy, no. Oh, even in the first episode, I was calling him Billy. Holy crap. <laughs> I, call him, I call him Billy because that was the... Kind of like the generic name that I gave to all kids. It was like that if you've ever watched like Futurama or a 1950s commercial or something, it was like, or like, I'm Troy McClure kind of videos. And it was talking to the kids and it was like, oh, you got it, little Billy. Or like, don't touch that little uh, Susie kind of things. Um, and that's why I called everything Billy and Susie earlier on in the episodes. Oh, man. And I started off calling things Billy in Outlast, I think. <laughs> oh, I lost- I lost my little boy. Backflips. Backflips like a boss! Jesus Christ, Okay, that... your head kind of went into the wheel there for a second. There's go, no audio on go. anything! Did I pass my very first level? He's pedaling like a motherfucker! Motherfucker? <laughs> I did! <laughs> what, what the- the- Yeah! Finish it! First try, didn't even die! First time to ever play Happy Wheels like a boss! Oh my god, Jesus, that is... Oh... That's cringy. That's hard to watch. <laughs> that's a completely different style of... recording and editing and commentating on things. And there was no audio in that entire level. And when I put the audio back into this level, into this episode, that was the biggest editing job I had ever done in my life up until that point. And I thought, oh... I'm so- I'm so good at YouTube. I'm so good at editing. I put on all the sound effects again. There was no sound effects in that whole first minute and uh, a half. I'll go with Billy and Bobby on the bike again. How do I- What ah, sound effects did I put in? go. That's- You can hear it in my headphones coming into oh my, my microphone. Oh my god, I might just actually have, like, broken the game. Did I? Oh, oh god, oh, I can't no, even play you Happy Wheels. Mm. You call I yourself a Happy Wheels veteran? Ah! Get over it! Oh! Uh, I'm in. Yeah! So that that victory sound I added in for some reason. The other one I didn't. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you know, it's deserved there. God, November 2013, and then it just exploded into this phenomenon, and it kept going on forever. And then I finally ended it at 100 episodes. Is that in here? Yeah, there it is. The the very last episode. Let's click on that one and see how different it is. My name is Jack Seth the Guy and welcome back to Happy Wheels! God, who ever thought that this day would come? I'm so nervous! 
Hi! Are you? Welcome to the finale of Happy Wheels! It's here! Sorry it took me so long to actually get to the finale. So I'm, I'm much more like the way I am now in this video, because this was um, November 2016. So, three years later, was it? No, it's November 13th. It was almost to the exact day. Why didn't I do that? Ah, oh, that would have been perfect, but this was also a live stream, I think. I think I streamed this and then edited it back down. I'm pretty sure I did. Oh, jeez, because I think I was looking at chat. Because I, did I originally I? wanted to do it as the anniversary, because November 16th, I think, was the anniversary for like three years of Happy Wheels, which is a lot of Happy Wheels. Yeah. And I, this is the longest running series on the channel, I think, besides reading your comments. Um, so this, <laughs> this also, I started to get a little bit of facial hair, and then I have green hair. That, that green hair does not look good. That green hair looks like a mess right now. That is disastrous. Get rid of Billy. Hell yeah. Damn there you go. Bye, Billy. Oh, I didn't get rid of him. I just killed him. <laughs> That's just as good sometimes. Oh, oh shit. Happy oh, wheels. shit. Come on. No. <laughs> yeah, God, I fucking blew out my mic and everything. I didn't know what I was doing still. Still have no idea what I'm doing. Who am I? What am I? What's happening? What are videos? Top of the morning, here, ladies. My name is Jack Septic and welcome to Undertale. Jesus fucking Christ. That's a lot of information to take in in the first three seconds. Can I even do that anymore? Top of the morning, here, ladies. My name is Jack Septic and welcome to Undertale. Top of the morning, here, ladies. My name is Jack Septic and welcome to Undertale. <laughs> Still got it. What happened to the old Jack Septic guy? I miss the old Jack Septic guy. I miss, I miss when Jack wore a hat. This is also when I was wearing a hat. Undertale is like. Three and a half years ago at this point? Well, it's not really. October's not a half a year. But, October 2015. Mother of Christ. That's old. Of course Undertale is in the, the top. That's like... People know me for either Happy Wheels or Undertale at this point. Um, was my hair green back then? Yeah, it was, because the second thumbnail has green hair in it. A lot of people have been asking me to play this game and I'm really curious about it myself because there's so many good things on the internet about this lately. A lot of people are talking about it and saying that it's a really good game, that it's funny, the character- Why- why is he yelling? Why is he yelling about everything that's happening? Why? Come on! <laughs> Again, I- I can say that now and look back and think like, God, why is he yelling so much? But at the time, that was just- that was just who I was. I've- I've changed a lot since then and I've I've matured and I've grown and I've evolved and different things on my channel have have moved forward. So, I'm just a, I'm just a different person by then, which is good. You you should become a different person every few years. If if you're not then you're kind of just reliving the past over and over again. Um it's good to grow. It's good to learn new things. It's good to evolve. Um that doesn't mean that this is bad or I regret this or anything like that. It's just it's just such a different time, such a different energy on the channel, such a different vibe of things that were going on. And when I played Undertale, first off, I didn't care at all about Undertale when it came out. It came out, I saw some videos of it, I looked at gameplay and I was like, God, that looks awful, I'm not playing that. And then, which was the point, it was supposed to look crude, Toby Fox himself said he made the art style look like that for a very specific reason. And then, some people had asked me to play it, some other channels were playing it, Game Grumps were playing it at the time. And, I decided, you know what, why not, I'll... I'll throw my name in, I'll give it a shot. And I did a couple of episodes, and nobody gave a shit. <laughs> it was the same in Happy Wheels. Like, when I uploaded the episode, no one really cared. A, a few people watched it, it got, it got decent views, but at the time, for what the channel was, and what the regular views on the channel were, it was getting kind of crappy views. Um, so I thought, oh, maybe people don't like this. So after like the third episode, I was like, ah, I'll, I'll see. And by the third episode, then I just really liked it. I was having a blast playing it. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to keep playing it. I want to play it. I don't really care how it's going to do anymore. So then it just took off. Everybody started watching it. And now it has 16 and a half million views. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird how that happens? I almost didn't play Happy Wheels. I could have gave up on Undertale. And now they're two of the biggest series on the entire channel. That's bizarre. And of course, of course this episode. Okay, well, I gotta go pee. I'll be back in a sec. Of course. <laughs> this, Sorry. Maybe this is why this series did so well, is because the first episode had the pee break in it. Oh, man. And everyone's like, we heard you pee. It's like, no, you can't. You can't hear me pee. I don't pee like a regular human. Um, <laughs> I pee in the shower. But for 
This was not le left in on purpose. As much as people want to believe that I left this in on purpose to get watch time, um, back then, this is October 2015, no one was really even, well, I guess they kind of were talking about watch time, but it's not, it wasn't the really known metric for getting views and money and all that kind of stuff as it is now. <coughs> so back then, when I recorded this video, I, I made a mistake. When I recorded it, I, okay, a little background information on this video. When I recorded this, the first time I did it, I got to Toriel and I killed her. I accidentally killed Toriel. Well, I didn't accidentally kill her. I killed her on my first playthrough. And after I killed her, I was like, are people going to be mad about that? Yeah, people are going to be mad about that, aren't they? And I, I went, I, I kind of like looked around the internet and then I was like, yeah, people are really mad when you kill characters in this game. So, I went back and I redid the Toriel part because I didn't want to get her killed. I didn't want to kill Toriel. So I went back and I redid the fight because I wanted to keep her alive. And I ended up dying in the Toriel fight, which I didn't even know was a thing, or people didn't even know it was a thing you could do because her, her attacks dodge you. And I managed to be that good at the game that I managed to get killed by Toriel. Um, but... Because of that, I was like, oh yeah, remember there's a part of this video you need to edit out. Because I was editing my own videos back then. And in my head, I was like, oh, the part that I'm supposed to edit out is the Toriel fight. And I'm supposed to, like, re-edit that section because I'm not supposed to kill her. Uh, but what ended up happening was the part that I was, I was supposed to remember to edit out was the pee break. So when I went back, I completely forgot that this happened. I completely forgot. And it was such a long video that I didn't go through every minute of it. I just kind of left it. And I should have known, because you can see in the waveform that I'm not making any, like, voice file anymore. So I should have known that that was the part that I was supposed to cut out, but nope. <laughs> it just goes on. How long is the pee break? Is it like a minute? Yeah, and that's why people think that I left it in. Okay, I... I just left it in. Okay, eyes back. No two. Yeah, so it's about a minute long, and then the uh, the video ended up as an hour, one minute, and twelve. So people are like, ah, oh, he got the extra minute of watch time. It's like if you do YouTube, you know, an extra minute of watch time means fuck all in an hour long video. Um, so it's just a, it was just a mistake, but <laughs> it's funny. I kind of glad it, it was left in because it was kind of like a behind the scenes peek at like, yep, I'm human. Sometimes I fuck up. I do pee. And people often ask, like, do you ever need to go to the bathroom when you record? Do you ever, like, fart when you record? It's like, yeah, I'm human. Of course I do. Everybody does. And Robin's animation! Robin's animation is in the the top videos. So, what are we gonna do? I love it. I actually don't know. Do not take what I say. The little runny cycle is so accurate. fucking cute. I am wrong about a lot of things. So, some of the background on this, Robin's watching right now. Hi, Robin. Wave to the people. Um... <laughs> So, Robin made this animation before he started, uh, animating for me. Before he started editing for me. Because he had made, he had made a Mark animation and he had made a Grumps animation. These are the character models from those animations. He had made those and I found them randomly and I was like, it was his rocket ship animation for the Grumps. Uh, and I looked at it and I was like, holy shit, this is way beyond any animation that I've ever seen on YouTube. It was like the highest, most polished animation that I'd seen, because everything else was 2D at the time that I'd seen. And here was Robin coming along with fucking 3D animated stuff with crazy ass depth of field and gorgeous lighting and colors and... to be an astrophysicist. I don't know these... It was just, it was phenomenal to look at. And I know, Robin, this is weird because you're watching this now and I'm tuning your horn for you. But... It was so well done that I was like, I would love something like that on my channel with this fucking face. I would love something like that on my channel. And I reached out to him, I emailed him, and I said, Oh, you've made one for those guys, so maybe you'd like my channel, and maybe you'd want to uh, make an animation for me. Um, and he replied back very... I can't remember what the email said. Robin has the email still. Um, and it's something like, Hi, my name is Sean McLaughlin, and I run the channel Jack Jacksepticeye. It was really awkward. Um, but kind of sweet at the same time to look back at it now, but when I, when I messaged him, he, he very nicely said yes, thankfully, that he wanted to make an animation for me. And I, Robin, did you make two animations before you started editing for me? You definitely made this one, um, January 2016, and then it was May 2016 when he started working with me. So he, when, when he made this animation then, 
after that I had said, I'm looking into getting an editor, maybe, in one of my vlogs. And then Robin just messaged me one day and was like, hey, I can edit for you if you want. And because we had worked together already and I kind of talked to him a little bit and I, I trusted his comedic timing and his sense of style and everything because of this video, then I was like, you know what? Let's try it out. If any of you out there are watching and you're and you make YouTube videos and you're thinking about getting an editor, I would hi highly suggest it because it has made my life a lot easier anyway. It's freed up a lot of my time to be able to do other things, but it's also given like fresh eyes and a fresh perspective on the videos I'm making. It puts a different kind of style into it when my style had been very much just me, 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 me all the time. And then bringing somebody else on to help out with it kind of brought a fresh perspective on it. It changed up the content a slight bit. So that kind of stuff is fun, but also just the amount of time it has freed up for me to be able to do things on my own and just give me back my life. I was doing YouTube just so, so consistently and so constantly that it was all I could think about. It was all I was doing. I had no time to hang out with friends, to go outside, to go eat somewhere else, to go grocery shopping. I didn't even have time to cook for myself half the time. I would just order food all the time because that's, that's all I had time for. I was just working. 12 hours a day on my own doing my videos if it wasn't if I wasn't recording it or editing it or uploading it or rendering it I was Looking for new stuff to play I was progressing a game in my spare time to try and get to a different location To try and get to where I wanted to be for the next episode. I was practicing something I was looking into some other content. I was answering comments. I was on Twitter. It was all just part of the job and bringing Robin on to help me edit was one of the best decisions that I've ever made for the channel because it's not only has it freed up more time and made the videos better in my in my opinion it's just made them it's made the system a lot more fluid but also now Robin's a good friend of mine and <laughs> I got that out of it so it's just a really a really great decision on the channel at the time but it was a really hard thing to do and I I was going to that creator summit in New York at the time and it was right after PAX East I had four days to get videos ready and I just didn't have the time. I didn't have time. I didn't want to edit when I was at the Creator Summit. I wanted to just enjoy that. So when I when I was going, I was like, okay, this is the time when I'm going to ask you to edit some stuff for me, Robin. Because I have no time to edit them. I'll record them and send them to you and we'll see what happens. And the first one he did was Radical Rockets? Yeah, this game. That's- oh Jesus Christ, that scared me. That's not a Robin edit. <laughs> My name is Jack Subtico and welcome to a game so. called Radical Rockets. I saw this game a really long time ago and I was going to play it and then I com it completely slipped my- Guys, so loud! Um, but I'm wearing the Berlin jumper in that one. But that was the first episode that Robin edited and I was really worried. We were both kind of worried, me and Robin, because he wanted to edit stuff in a way that didn't seem like somebody else was editing it and that's what I wanted too. I wanted it to be seamless. But some people immediately like, some people- oh, people- apparently I talked about this before. Some people immediately picked up that somebody else edited this, which was crazy to me. Um, that the style was so ingrained in people's brain that any slight change in it was noticeable. And I could watch this video right now and wouldn't see a difference. I guess because Robin's been editing for so long now at this point, but that, that was the first video he edited. Um, and then after that, it was like, I had almost no notes to give him. I wrote back a couple of notes to be like, maybe we could tighten this up, make this a little faster, change this kind of thing. These effects are slightly too loud or something like that. And then after that, it was fine. Everything just progressed the way it was. It was great. Not too high though, because you got lightheaded and died. Mercury! You speedy Gonzalez motherfucker! That is this is my close. favorite animation on the channel. Burn up, you'd be like Icarus. Not only for the style of it, the style is my my main reason why I like it so much because the 3D animation is just so good. Um, but the pacing of it and the material that Robin pulled out of that Universe Sandbox video to be able to make it into like a cohesive classroom environment kind of thing, that was just remarkable to me. And like the little the little legs, the the leg walk cycle is my favorite part of the, the whole animation. See you later, dudes. That's the best. Wait for it. <laughs> It really just felt like me, um, that like loud, energetic, like let's go kind of the kind of energy, and he really nailed it. This one, I was top of the morning, chill ladies. My name is Jack Septicai, and welcome back to Surgeon Simulator. It's been I'm wearing a PewDiePie shirt. <laughs> Super fan, subscribe to PewDiePie. That's me. See, all of you think that you're the real nine-year-olds. I was an original nine-year-old. I was a pro. But this video, this only did well because of Trump. 
This only did well because Trump's in it. And it's a video where you can do surgery on Trump and potentially kill him. That's the only reason why this video did well. It has 15 million views, basically. It's about to cross over into 15 million views. Holy fuck, 15 million, really? 61,000 comments. All because Trump is in the title and in the thumbnail. Well, he's in the game as well. But, look at that fucking face. But this was at the time when all of that shit was kicking up, so people were just looking for Trump stuff, and this was cathartic for people. Now, before I, I do anything, I just want to say that I have absolutely no interest or care or worries or anything about the American presidential election campaigns that are going on right now. I don't give yeah, a shit so. who wins. I, I don't even think I know all the people who are running. Actually, I probably do, but I'm not going to say anything. Yeah, I was just like... I knew playing this, I, I like Surgeon Simulator anyway, and I wanted to play all the content they had for the game. I did all the VR stuff afterwards as well, but I remember doing this, I was like, oh, this new thing came out, that might be a fun thing to do a video on, people might get a kick out of it because it's Trump stuff. But I was like, I'm not bringing politics onto my channel. I still don't bring politics onto my channel. Politics and religion are like two things that I never really want to tap into on the channel, or at least... I'll allude to things every now and then, or where I stand on certain things, but I never want to, like, make a video talking about politics, or religion, or talk about my stance on things, because it's just a fucking hornet's nest. Um, I, I don't know, it's just a pain in the ass to try and deal with, and then, you're never going to appease everybody, so I'm like, other people can talk about these issues much better than I can, and if, I don't know, I was just like, I, I don't want the comments to turn into that, and the, the comments were a fucking shit show, anyway. Of, of course. I mean, it's always going to be that way. Anytime you bring up anything like this, it's always going to be a shit show. But this... This really just took off then, on its own. And it's one of the most... It's one of the most successful videos that I've ever done. And I think it's one of the most successful watch time and revenue based videos that I've ever done. If, if I go through like my lifetime of most... Or highest earning videos and highest most watch time videos, it's, it's up in like the top 5 or the top 10. It's fucking crazy. People, people, this video, man, I don't know, Trump. <laughs> people love to talk about him. And of course, back to back is Skate 3 and Grand Theft Auto 5. Holy mother of God. Grand, which video is this? Make it. Make it. Yeah. Make it. Oh my God, make it. Make it. So awesome at flying planes. So awesome at flying planes. I remember I used to do like these little specialized intros for the Grand Theft Auto videos because I was so... I'd done so many of them that I didn't want to do the regular top of the morning intro as the first thing you saw. So, this was... Oh man, this was... Was this before or after the PewDiePie shout out? Hello, beautiful world! Don't mind me, I'm just flying. This is my pilot license, this is one of the tests. Make it! Make it! <laughs> oh, make it! Make it! Make it now! <laughs> No! Oh lord, that face. Jesus Christ. And this soft edit. That soft transition. Because I was like, I don't want to cut straight to my thing because it'll be too abrupt. People won't want to see that. And now it's like, that's all my editing is. It's like, hey! Hi! How's it going? I don't know. What's up? You know, like that kind of editing. Yeah, so this is November 6, 2013. And this was the one from the PewDiePie shout out, September 17th. 2013. So, of as of September 17th, 2013, I had two and a half thousand subscribers, or three thousand subscribers. You can even go back and watch Felix's shout-out competition video, and you can see how many subscribers I have in that video. And I remember that very vividly. Felix is like, top of the morning, fucking, I don't know. This guy seems really cool, and I like it is whatever he's doing, or something like that. I can't remember how he described me, but this, this was that video. I didn't even have the, the like, high five. Top of the morning to you, laddie! I had the, the soft like, hello, but it was before the whole like, whoosh, slap my ass. My name is Jacksepticeye and welcome to the big one. I just installed it and I haven't done much. I only played the intro I haven't of the done game much. and then I ended up as Franklin, who you're forced to end up as at the start. And now I'm just here at my house in my car. Let's. Oh God, so fucking different. That's wild. Three and a half million views. There's no whip noise at the start. The video that noticed PewDiePie. Yeah, the video noticed PewDiePie. My video gave PewDiePie a shout out. That's why his channel got so successful. Is it just me or does Jack sound less Irish here than he does in 2018? Yeah, I was. 
um, I wasn't, well, I wasn't less Irish. I didn't have less Irish in my DNA and my genetics, but I was still just a version of myself that I wasn't happy with. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what people would react to. I didn't know, I didn't like the sound of my own voice. I didn't like hearing my own accent, things like that. So I was just, I was talking in a different voice because I, I don't know. I didn't like myself. <laughs> I didn't like who I was. Oh, hey, Carlos. Do you want to go get some food? Oh, God. Yeah, me, I'm hungry. I was doing that as well for fucking Skate 3 videos. I was doing these cringy intros. Damn, honey. Why you no pay attention to me anymore? Carlos, baby, I know I slept with Jerry, but it mean nothing. You are my one true love. Stop. Fuck me. Well, fuck you, Carlos. So this is like March 2014 when Skate 3 was becoming a thing. This is this is part 16. Why is part 16? Oh, because I finally did the double flip. Oh yeah, that's that's why. Um, but this was this is like high five territory then at this point. Top of the morning, you ladies. My name is Jack Septiguy, and Carlos is still following me. Carlos is still following me. Yeah, because you hit him with the skateboard in the intro two seconds before that. But uh, yeah, I don't know what to do with this video. That's kind of why I haven't been recording a lot of Skate 3 lately. <laughs> I haven't been recording much Skate 3 lately. Part 16. Um, and that was every Skate video. It was just doing so well and people liked it so much and I was enjoying it. It was like, yeah, but what do I do? What do I do next? I have no freaking idea. I'm just going to keep playing it and hope fun shit happens. Um, and I was still editing my own stuff back then, so it was like, I, I don't know what to do. I want to make fun parts, but at this point, how many how many skate videos did I end up doing? 23? Oh, mother of God. April 2014 was when I stopped playing Skate 3. Oh, and everybody's always like, bring back Skate 3. Do it again, please. Every well, everyone wants me to bring back all the old games anyway, but it, it just wouldn't be the same. I could go back and play Happy Wheels, Grand Theft Auto 5, Skate 3. But when I go back and play it, everyone wants the channel to be what it was like four years ago, three years ago. When really it's like, no, the channel shouldn't be what it was that time because that was a completely different person. It was it was still me, it was still authentic, it was still who I was at the time. But who I am now is completely different. I'm, I don't do videos the same way. I don't, I wouldn't react to the game the same way. I wouldn't have the same energy towards the game as I did back then. So it just wouldn't be the same. And every, a lot of people would just be like, a lot of people would just say that in the comments as well. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe for like a special thing sometime we'll go back and just play some old games, who knows. Um, but I, I don't know, I like where the channel is now. I like how things have progressed and grown and evolved to where they are now. I don't regret any of this, this was super fucking fun to do back then. It's just... It's not, it's like, this is March 2014. This is almost five years ago at this point. If I was, I'm still in the log cabin back then. I'm very unhappy here. Uh, you can watch these videos and look at them and think like, oh, the good old days. Like, I want the old Jack back. It's like, really? You want the guy who was miserable and alone and had nobody really to talk to and outside of his videos was just depressed? <laughs> like, recording videos is my happiest time. And that's why I got so involved in it, is because I, I felt like I was the best version of myself when I was recording my videos. That's why I was so passionate about it. But this this guy is not happy. This is not a happy person at this time in my life. I'm, li I'm living in the log cabins. I'm miserable. I had, I had like no friends to really play video games with or hang out with. I was, I was living in a cabin that got so cold that the ice would form on the inside of the walls. That when the wind came around, you were worried that it was going to blow the roof off the cabin. It's like, now I'm I'm here in my own house. And I know people will say that, oh, you changed. It's like, yes, of course I've changed. Um, there's, but there's a difference between how much I've changed versus how much your perception of me has changed because the channel is as large as it is now. And I think, I think that's an important distinction whenever you're talking to people about these types of things. And to just be aware of how much happier people can be in the state they are now. When people say like, I, w I miss the old you, I wish you would go back to that. You, please think about the person you're saying this to as well. We're still people. I know it's easy to take shots at a YouTuber, especially if they have a very large channel, but at the same time, we're still people. We still hear this stuff. It still gets to us when you say these things, if you catch us in a certain mood. If we're not feeling great about ourselves and then you go into the comments and you see stuff like that, it's just gonna make you feel miserable again. 
And that's what I'm saying, like, back then when I was doing Grand Theft Auto and, and this type of stuff, I, I just wasn't happy. I, me now, in my life, I am the happiest I have ever been in my entire life. And for, for people to come around then and say, like, I miss the old him, it's like, I, I don't. I, it's nostalgic to go back and do this, and again, don't regret any of it. I wouldn't change a thing, and this is not- I'm not being fake. I know I said I'm- I'm depressed outside of the videos, but that's only because the videos brought the only source of joy into my life, and that's why I was so energetic. I was so bubbly, I was so into it. It's because I finally had something that was mine that I could, like, sit down and record and just be happy and forget about the rest of my life. And the channel only had a couple of hundred thousand subscribers at this point, if even. This was March 2014, and the channel hit a million in August of 2014. So even back then, I was just having a blast doing it. I was just doing it for the love of doing it. The same way I've always done it. The same reason I started doing it is because I was bored and I was sad and I had nobody to talk to and I wanted to play video games like some other people in video games did. And the the very first- I've, I've said all this stuff in the tour. This is like a big part of what the tour was. And you'll see it in the documentary whenever that comes out, but... The first channel I ever found on YouTube, um, the first channel I ever actively watched was Level Cap Gaming. Because I was playing a lot of Battlefield 3 at the time and I wanted to get better at it. I wasn't doing YouTube myself. I wanted to get better at Battlefield 3, so I, I was watching his channel and I was learning, like, the tips on how to, like, learn the maps and faster ways of just getting better at the game. And it blew me away because he was playing games on his own and he was just having fun and he was doing it as, as his job. But I didn't know that. I was just impressed by the fact that he had a channel and all these people came along and watched it and it, it brought me out of a difficult time. Watching him made me feel less lonely. Being a part of his community made me feel less lonely, less sad. And it just pulled me out of a very, very rough part of my life and just gave me something to look forward to each day and a piece of joy and something to watch every day. And I was like, you know what? I want to do that for people. I, I know what that feels like to not have anybody to talk to. So, who who knew better than me at that time? So I, I made a channel of my own and I started playing games and I wanted to I wanted to do that for other people. I wanted to create like a little hub for people to come and have fun and forget about whatever was going on in their lives and just have somebody to talk to and somebody to feel like they could interact with. And in turn, I needed that as well. I needed people to talk to. I needed a community. I needed friends. So <laughs> it's kind of a sad origin story for the channel. But um that, that was just my reasoning behind it, and that was why I was so involved in the community, and why I was so into it, and why I was so, like... Why I interacted with the community so extremely heavily was because I just loved it. Finally, people were there talking and having fun, and I felt like I had friends, and... I don't know, it's a little sad when you think about it, but... That, at the time, that's where I was, so... No, I, I prefer current Jacksepticeye. Whatever about the subjectivity of how funny the videos are, or the games I'm playing, and things like that, that's- that's all subjective to your own taste. That kind of stuff you can miss, but... Me as a person, I- I feel like I'm just much better now. Okay, I'm just gonna stop the video here, I could go through this all day. Um, maybe I'll go through some more of these videos again at some point. Um, <laughs> the fucking try not to laugh number three is up there, and it- even back then it had- LAUGH in it. Um, VR videos did well. These Flash games always used to do well back then. The douchebag games, the EV game. Oh, Megalodon? I don't know why this episode does so well. Um, that was- that was really weird, because I played with Felix, Spoon, and Mark, I think? And it was just such a random thing. The game we were going to play that day didn't work, so we chose this. Some more animations from Steph. A lot of Happy Wheels, Papers, Please. Man. It's fun to go back and look at all these old things. I'm- I'm really- I'm really happy with this channel. It's the- it's the greatest thing I've ever done with my life, and it's afforded me so many cool opportunities, and I'm so extremely lucky to be where I am today, to be able to do this every day, and just have fun with it, and... I'd like to think that my- my reasoning for doing it, and my morals behind doing it, and those types of things have never changed. I still do it just for the love of doing it, and numbers and all that stuff are great, but... It's never really been the driving force behind it. Every now and then... Kind of, yeah, but... It was never the reason I started it, and it's never the reason why I keep doing it. It's just... It's just fun. It's just the- it's just the coolest job in the world. It's the coolest thing to be able to do, so... Why not have fun with it and... Keep going. God, I've been recording for like an hour. Okay, well, that does it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found some sort of enjoyment out of it. I have no idea how this video is going to turn out. Ha <laughs> ha! Bye! <laughs>